Hey folks, um, the next topic we're going to look at is uh, the polar form, or sometimes people call it the trigonometric form, of complex numbers. Uh, so if you remember back to complex numbers, uh, the, the rectangular form, or the form that you're used to, to have seen so far, of a complex number, it's the form A plus BI. And a lot of times we use Z uh, to represent the complex number, and so a lot of times we would say, uh, Z equals A plus BI, and I'll, I'll call that the rectangular form. And we could plot these complex numbers um, by making, you know, a, a couple of axes. Notice that the uh, horizontal axis, uh, if you remember, it was called the real axis, and the vertical axis was the imaginary axis. And um, so to plot any generic point, uh, a complex number, I should say, z equals a plus bi, you would find a on the real axis, the b on the imaginary, and that point right there would be the complex number a plus bi. Uh, also remember, some people would say that in your complex number, uh, z equals a plus bi, that a is called the real part of the complex number, and the bi is called the, uh, the imaginary part. First thing that we need to look at is uh, make sure you remember how to do this, or if you haven't seen it before, it's very easy to do. And that's finding the absolute value of a complex number. So now absolute value, well we know the symbol, you know the vertical lines, absolute value of, of z uh, here. The absolute value of a complex number, it is the square root of a squared plus b squared. It's like, you know, where, where, where's that coming from? With real numbers, and if you just made like a, a, a number line, you know absolute value has been uh, instilled upon you that it's distance from zero on the number line. So I want you to kind of think that absolute value, it still means a distance. And specifically, uh, absolute value here specifically is the distance from the origin to the complex number that's what the absolute value is. So, you know, with that said, uh, why don't we just do a quick example of finding the uh, absolute value of a complex number. All right, so here on this first example, I thought we'd find the absolute value of the complex number uh, uh, z equals 3 minus 4i. Uh, you know, hey, real quickly, if I were to plot that complex number, Again, keep in mind this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. I would find that that complex number is about right there. So I thought we'd just go ahead and plot it real quick. Find the absolute value. So the absolute value is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So that's the square root of a is 3, b is negative 4. So we get the square root of 9 plus 16. That's the square root of 25, which is 5. So the absolute value of that complex number is 5. Keep in mind, that, that really means the distance from the origin to the complex number is five units. So that's it, very, very friendly, very uh, straightforward in how to complete, compute the absolute value of a complex number. All right, here real quickly, um, we're gonna see why, why this, this section, and, and it's generally called the polar form of a complex number. We've already looked at polar coordinates. So when I, you know, what I've done is I've plotted a um, uh, complex number here, z equals a plus bi, and I went ahead and made a triangle, and I've labeled the sides of the triangle. If this is A, then the side of this uh, triangle has a length of A. Uh, this side has B. And I'm calling this uh, side here to be R. And then here's uh, the theta. And we could come up with, um, we could come up with stuff that, that should look familiar. It's going to remind you of polar coordinates. For example, A, A is R cosine theta. And you should see that B is R sine theta. I mean, think about it, you know, just like in the polar coordinates, here's your theta. 
So the cosine of theta, cosine of theta, adjacent over hypotenuse, that's A over R. Multiply both sides by R, you get A is R cosine, and likewise B equals R sine. Should look exactly like what you were, were doing when uh, we were dealing with polar coordinates. So without, without uh, further ado, R is square root of A squared plus B squared just like what we saw in polar coordinates, and tangent of theta, tangent of theta is B over A, just like what we, we uh, were experienced with uh, polar coordinates. One thing I'd like to point out here, this should look familiar, the square root of A squared plus B squared. Just did an example showing that that's, um, that's how we find the absolute value of Z. So this R is nothing more than the absolute value of Z. Remember I said absolute value of Z is the same thing as the distance from the origin to the complex number? Sure looks like that's what that is. So with all this stuff, we can make sense out of the following definition. This definition says that if you have z equals a plus bi, okay, that's a rectangular form of a complex number. What we see here, we know, look what a is. a is r cosine theta, and b is r sine theta. So if we substitute r cosine theta in for a, and r sine theta for b, we get what is called the polar form of a complex number. That's what this definition is. It's the definition of the polar form of a complex number. There's a nicer way to write this. Since r is a factor here, you could factor out the r and write it as z equals r quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta. So again, this is our definition of the polar form of a complex number. And hopefully you see why it is called the polar form of a complex number. So I need you to know this. I need you to know this is the polar form of a complex number. So I think what we'll do next is, um, you know, we'll look at a couple of examples going from uh, rectangular form to polar form. And then uh, if I give you a rectangular, you know, ba basically I want to go both ways. That if I give you something in uh, polar form, you can put it back into rectangular form. If I give you something in rectangular form, you could put it into polar form. So let's do a couple of those examples now. All right, hey, the first example here of uh, uh, doing this, going back and forth between the two different forms, I say, let's write in rectangular form this complex number. Now, notice this complex number is written in polar form. 2 square root 2 quantity cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. So I'm, being, I'm asking, let's put it back into the rectangular form. Let's put it back into the a plus bi form. Pretty straightforward on how to do this. I mean, what's the cosine of pi over 4? I mean, you know the cosine of pi over 4 is square root 2 over 2. What's the sine of pi over 4? You know the sine of pi over 4 is square root 2 over 2. And so now if you take 2 square root 2 and just distribute it in there, you're going to get well, 2 square root 2 times square root 2 over 2. It's going to leave you with a 2. Then if you take 2 square root 2, Multiply it by square root 2 over 2, you're going to get a 2, then i. So that's the rectangular form. That's the polar form. That's the rectangular form. So it's pretty straightforward to go from polar form to rectangular form. In the next example, we're going to go from rectangular form and put it into polar form. All right, here in this example, we're going to write uh, z equals 5 minus 5i. We're going to put that into polar form. Um, you know, probably the first thing I would do here is, um, let me kind of block this off here. It's my little reminder of what polar form is. 
I'd quickly plot that point. So if I quickly plot that point, there's the real axis, here's the imaginary axis. 5 minus 5i, that's going to be about right, I'll put it about right here. That's z equals 5 minus 5i. Alright, so now here I am, I need to find, the important things I need to find uh, to get it into polar form would be r, Remember, r is going to be like the absolute value, and theta. Well, we know r is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So r is, well, a is 5, b is negative 5. So we get r is the square root, uh, 5 squared is 25, negative 5 squared is 25, so 25 plus 25. We get r is the square root of 50, or if you prefer, that's 5 square root 2. Just simplifying square root 50 down to 5 square root 2. Next, let's determine theta. So tangent theta is b over a. Tangent theta is negative 5 over 5. So tangent theta is negative 1. Okay, now some of you are saying, well, tangent theta is negative 1. That would give me a theta value of negative pi over 4. And if you're thinking theta is negative pi over 4, that would be that angle measurement there. What we want to do, though, in writing these complex numbers in polar form, is we want our theta, our angle theta, to be a positive angle. And we should be able to make it a positive angle somewhere between 0 and 2 pi. So rather than give a negative pi over 4, we're going to give this angle measure, which is 7 pi over 4. So we have all the parts and pieces. We know what r is. We know what theta is. We know what r is. We know what theta is. So we can now write that z equals 5 minus 5i in polar form would be z equals r, which is 5 square root 2, times cosine 7 pi over 4, plus i sine 7 pi over 4. And that's all there is to it. So that's it on how you can take a standard form, put it into polar form. All right, the final topic here in this section uh, is if you have two, uh, two complex numbers in polar form, so I'll call them Z1, and uh, this is the first one, and in polar form it's R1, uh, quantity cosine theta 1 plus I sine theta 1, and then the second complex number in uh, polar form is Z sub 2, which is R sub 2, quantity cosine theta 2 plus I sine theta 2. Then if you want to multiply those two complex numbers together that are in polar form, so you want to multiply them, z1 times z2, the result of that multiplication is nothing more than r1 times r2, so r1 times r2, r1 times r2, times the quantity cosine theta1 plus theta2, cosine theta1 plus theta2, plus i sine theta1 plus theta2. If you want to divide, divide the r's. So z1 divided by z2 is r1 divided by r2 times the quantity cosine theta1 minus theta2 plus i sine theta1 minus theta2. So um, well, let's see if we can get a quick example in here. So here's a quick example. Let's say z1, z1 is 4 times the cosine 3 pi over 4 plus i sine 3 pi over 4 and z2 is 3 cosine pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. So if you're asked to do z1 times z2 well, z1 times z2, 
according to uh, what we have here, Z1 times Z2 will be 4 times 3. So 4 times 3 times the cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. So that's 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 3 plus i sine theta 1 plus theta 2. And notice what that gives us. That's going to give us 12, 4 times 3 is 12, times the quantity cosine. And if I do 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 3, see common denominator would be 12. This would be 9 pi over 12 plus a 4 pi over 12. 9 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12. That's 13 pi over 12 plus I sine 13 pi over 12. That's it. That's how you would multiply those two complex numbers that are in polar form. And it's just as straightforward if you were asked to divide. Z1 divided by Z2. So you'd start off, it's R1 divided by R2. So that's 4 thirds. And then it's cosine of 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 3, plus I sine 3 pi over 4, minus pi over 3. So that gives us a 4 thirds quantity cosine. See, 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 3, again, common denominator is 12. So that's a 9 pi over 12 minus 4 pi over 12. Uh, that's 5 pi over 12. And then plus I sine 5 pi over 12. And that's all there is to it when uh, you wanted to multiply or divide two complex numbers together that are written in polar form. So that's it for this section. Um, I hope you find it to be, you know, pretty straightforward. It builds on our knowledge of polar, the polar coordinate system and polar numbers. Um, is using those ideas to put complex numbers into polar form. Thanks for watching.